Well, something you spoke to there is the ability for these technologies to be exponential, right? What we see today from privateer might not be what it is in five years or 50 years. And I had the privilege of talking to Alex yesterday, and he told me the story about you from the very, very early days where when you were younger, you basically told your dad, hey, dad, I want to have a computer someday. And he said, because at this time, this is true. He said, you're crazy. Computers cost as much as a house. And you told him, well, dad, I'll live in an apartment. And you seem to really, really just want a computer at that time. Um, to your point earlier, starting Apple was not about building one of the biggest businesses in the world. It was wanting a computer and wanting other people to have that. I'm curious just to know from a personal perspective, what did you see back then? Was it truly just like a personal need for this device? Or I, I want to you know, dig into that early Waz brain and, and hear your perspective on what was going on in those early days. A lot of great things come personally. And I learned even, I taught uh, middle school and elementary school for eight years straight, full time, full time, mm -hmm. like every hour of the day, up to seven days a week, no press allowed. So it's not a big story, but I learned that it was less important that you're speaking facts and knowledge from your mouth. Knowledge was less important than the motivation of my students to learn, had to have, find ways to make it fun, to make it understandable, to make it, um, you know, like stories that, that tell what's in their head. And that's when I decided, you know what? Wanting something is even more important. And I go back, I wanted a computer. It was in my heart. And I didn't know if I ever, ever get it. I didn't know if designing computers would ever be a job for engineers because we were back in the analog days, you know, smart math stuff. And, but I kept it in me and eventually I found the path to do it. So I was building a computer for myself and mm -hmm. turned out that the point in time, luck is sometimes there's a lot of luck in business success. And the point in time that I was going to build that computer, no matter what it was worth, turned out to be worth a ton. And, you know, and then a lot of times when people are successful in technology, I've seen them look off into space because we almost all come from science backgrounds. And even when we, when Apple went public around 1980, um, our president, Mike Scott, maybe 81 or two, um, started a little company with some people. I even, I funded into that. He's a friend. And actually we did a launch of a rocket from out at sea from somewhere. So I don't know. There were a bunch of rocket engineers around saying it is possible to do with, let's say, money. Now, governments have all the resources, you know, but they're stale in their approaches because of it. Here's what we can do very successfully, very stably. We know we'll get there if we put enough money in and test enough. And private industry works so differently. I've only been in private and I just love having ideas and thinking about them and, you know, thinking different and the creativity that comes about when you think, my gosh, I could do something they haven't done before. Or maybe the resources are cheaper. The sorts of huge computing devices are cheaper to make and maybe certain types of motors. And I can do something that hasn't been done before, sensors that didn't ex exist before. And let's you got to always shoot for the top being, you know, one of the leaders in the world. And that's just how we think. So a lot of times when I think of government versus private, I also come down to types of people, which is very important. And you have an inventor who could be given a job and they've gone through all the, the right, they have the right skill sets and they've gone through the right university, you know, um, majors and PhDs and, and, uh, and they're an engineer and they can design what you sign them. But then there's the inventor. The inventor mm -hmm. goes along, thinks, oh my gosh, is there something I'm interested in that I could do? And would it work? And maybe it hasn't been done before. And can I make a different, make a difference in the world? And the inventor wants to run into a laboratory, hook up some demos real quick, try to get some sort of prototype to show that the idea is good, is right. And that's the sort of person I am. It's in your personality. You don't change it. You don't just say tomorrow, I'm going to be an inventor. Today, I'm an engineer. You're usually one or the other. So um, it's that's, that's another advantage of Alex, you know, putting together privateers. We're looking for the inventor types, you know? Yeah, definitely. I mean, another word sometimes people use for inventor is visionary. And I'm curious, in the early days when you were just out of passion creating these computers, could you see the path to today? Of course, you, you can't picture everything with so many advancements since those early days. But like, <laughs> how far along were you actually envisioning? And I'm asking this partially because sure. even if we apply this to space, a lot of the things that people talk about in the realm of space also sound kind of like science fiction, right? They probably won't be eventually, but I'm trying to understand also how you, how far along you see or the extrapolation that maybe goes on in your brain when you're originally talking about, yes, a computer with 200 transistors, and now we're talking billions and, and, and the applications that have kind of sprung yeah. from that. I myself, I was really a great engineer in a certain field, and I was designing the hottest products in the world for Hewlett Packard without even having a college degree yet. And then you have, you talk about visionary vision seeing the future 
Uh, that's different than invention, though. Inventor really wants to actually go in and create something today that didn't exist and not have a vision that's 50 years out or 10 years mm -hmm. out, because that's science fiction a lot. And everybody can talk about it and say later on, see, I proposed it, but it wasn't <laughs> yeah. really possible to do with money. And the engineer says, feet on the ground. What can I actually do and build and deliver to people? When we started Apple, you know, we had a great product that was going to be all the revenues of Apple for the first 10 years. But we had such a, we had a great lead and we were comfortable and we could do what we wanted. But the amount of memory that would hold a song costs, you know, we were back in the days of tape, it cost about a million dollars, a good wow. fraction of a million dollars. Do you think we saw it today where you have a device in your hand with a thousand songs on it even? Um, no, Steve Jobs was very instrumental in always taking us, do what we can do today. Try to do something a little more tomorrow, a little more. And we, you can have a lot of failures too, if you'll have one great product bringing in the, the revenues. But the whole idea was we'll move towards the future and we'll be a part of it and we'll be in with it. And after all, you look back at it, it was kind of invisible, the steps we took, but they all led to today. And then there was some, um, you know, some of that invention stuff we got to. Steve Jobs' Apple II was really the iPod music music. And, uh, and that was the first time, oh my gosh, up till then our company valuation was the same as the old Apple two days. And then all of a sudden we sold it to everyone in the world and our sales doubled and our profits doubled. And the board gave Steve billions and stock options and jet airplanes. That was the turning point. And then the iPhone was even better. And it was based on the iPod, not the reverse, not a phone. And we'll include an iPod more like it's an iPod, but you get a phone with it. And so it's hard to say that you really see the future more than a year ahead when you're working a year ahead on your projects. Mm -hmm. Whenever I tried to see the future a year ahead, I knew it one year ahead because I was working on it. If I looked two years ahead, made some guesses, oh my gosh, other aspects, other technologies and all came out of from outer space and people's desire, which way they wanted to go was different. It's very hard to predict even two years ahead successfully the way I work. Nowadays, we got huge, big companies. So it's kind of like, you know, anything they work on is going to be successful it's not it's not as much a it's not, not as much of a gamble but you know the real real inventors like to gamble like to prove the world that they can do more than you ever imagined 